special so we are coming into some special times at the moment a lot of distraction happening on the news my advice turn off the news <laughs> and see and see what this change is about and i'm very honored to have kelly back on the show uh, she was on probably about a year ago so kelly if you'd like to introduce yourself and a bit about what you do your background okay thank you uh, hi, my name is Kelly Nicholson. I live on the East Coast of the United States in Connecticut. I am a sound healer, intuitive artist, and soul coach. And really the, my work in the world is all about like harmonic navigation and going into our energy fields and where we have discrepancies and holding and creating harmony where we have disharmonies. And I feel like with what we have going on in the world right now, we are seeing the way those imbalances are playing out. And it's just a really important time to be here and to do the internal work so we can really just kind of anchor in and like we were talking about before, tend to our own frequency. And yeah. Understanding. <laughs> and what, so what's it, what's it been like? <laughs> what, so what's it been like for you the last year since we spoke? Uh, it's interesting to hear uh, everyone's take on how the lockdown and how everything has has changed for them. What's it been like for you the last year with kind of the uncertainty with everything going on? Yeah, I think it's really been just like with so many other people, you know, like taking away so many different things that, you know, we leaned into and really having to, you know, find new ways to connect and things like that. So this time has brought me to where I offer sound online now more often than I did before and really reaching out and connecting to people from, you know, that aren't just local and just, you know, in general, like it's had its ups and its downs. It's been trying and challenging. And also it's been just like a, you know, really introspective and reflective time to lean into stuff that's simple and, you know, nature and my own internal practices and things like that. So it's been challenging and, you know, also beautiful in its own way. And it's just, you know, also isolating and lonely. And then also like just being able to reach and feel community beyond like our own, like what we are allowed in the physical is really just been, you know, so expansive and also trying in the same way so it's you know i feel like with everything's kind of especially being springtime right now just in general how things are starting to open up more people are coming out and all of that you kind of feel that buzz um and something that i've noticed in like just my own like circle of family and people I've worked with I've seen both things where people are super excited and like have this burst of energy and then people are coming out like you know one foot in one foot out like I was just with you know people coming out and it being the first time they've ever been around someone without a mask on you know like so there's you know, I, I really like actually, actually last week with all the different like sessions and things that I had, I really had, you know, some times where I was like, whoa, I really felt the heaviness of that fear of what people have been sitting with and not like I haven't had my own, you know, in different ways, but what people have been sitting with like these past couple years and that nervousness to really come out and it's just it's it's heavy but also it's like a part of the process of you know everything opening up and you know everyone in their own space of what people are comfortable with you know so yeah that was, that was mm -hmm. and that that's the one of the big things about lockdown is it's the hermit kind of learning how to be not a hermit I, a few <laughs> years ago i was a hermit and i had her hermit parts and for me lockdown has, has made me realize what you're talking about is that hermit side of us which doesn't want us to go out doesn't want us to share a bit nervous a bit anxious or, or those different mm -hmm. different feelings 
and for me it was learning about myself and socializing and how important being social is and connecting to other people having those experiences so talking about experiences and connecting to people and socializing mm -hmm. what have you learned from the years of you expanding doing your sound work with groups with sessions I see you doing a lot of work in salt caves at the moment which is I think is really cool yeah. really special <laughs> <laughs> so, so for you as a person going yeah. through the times of COVID going through all of the years which have passed which have been fucking crazy yeah. what has it been like for you expanding through that and how have you in innovated your way through it these past couple years have just shown me like every single sound bath that I went to even when we had I'd be at places and there'd only be like three people in the room, you know, like two people in the room to some of the salt caves, they're um, obviously smaller, so we don't get large, like large groups at, anyway, but just to even be there and to do that was so powerful and impactful, like what it did in my own body, what I could feel, what we were doing, what we were supporting the earth and the collective energy, it just felt important. And what this, it really has like, almost like rallied my own inner warrior, you know, like every so often, like when I sort of get a little kind of bogged down or depleted, you know, with how heavy everything was, like every single time it would just be really invigorating and just like so purposeful. And I feel like that is what it's done for me as a practitioner in holding this space is like, yes, like kind of this is a big part of what I'm here to do and why. And of course, even though I would never have seen or known the way that this was all going to unfold, just like last week I was saying, I had those kind of ups and downs. I just was really feeling like, whoa, this is what I'm, I'm here to do. You know, this is the space that I'm here to hold. This is, you know, in the depths to rise up from that. Like really, like I was feeling that like kind of, when it's all weighing on you, like those moments of awakening that you are like in the depths of it all that take you to your knees. I feel like we're just at like in a collective moment of that on different levels. And just, it has just really inspired me to know that I'm right where I need to be. And my whole journey that's taken me and my whole life that has changed, that's taken me to this you know, path, this c career, or, you know, that sort of thing. It's just been like, this is exactly where I'm meant to be. And it's been fulfilling. <laughs> Outstanding. Did, did you have COVID at all? Did you get COVID? Have you had so, COVID yet? I never officially got tested, but yeah. I, I will say, like, I believe that I had it right before it came out. Um, so back <laughs> in January, and I just want to share one little thing about that. So I didn't get tested for the antibodies or anything like that, but I was so sick for like a month. It went into a sinus infection because I used to get sinus infections like really bad whenever I got sick. And I was finally like, I was feeling better after like three weeks and I was in my kitchen and I just asked my body, why do I still feel like this? Cause I was so depleted and had no energy. And I heard because you're building antibodies. And now that was before any of all of this stuff came out. And then they, I started hearing about the antibodies once you've got it. And I even went and Googled what that meant and I still didn't understand what it meant. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, okay, I don't get it. But then once the talk started happening, I was like, holy shit. That's what was, can I swear? I was like, oh my gosh, this is what it was. And then I, I ended up having like a whole meditation with a whole big vision of like, what was happening like a plan like the plan and like seeing people in their homes and their homes like from a sky view and homes being lit up in light and how that even though it was meant to separate us it was actually bringing us together in different ways and that seeing that in the very beginning and it came through me being really sick in my body um was really helped me through the whole process 
Um, yeah, and you had it too re recently, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And, and it, it does but for me mine was mine went on for a good good few weeks and mm -hmm. i didn't think I, I was like oh i probably had it loads of times but when i got mm -hmm. it i knew i knew i got it <laughs> like mm -hmm. it was it was mm -hmm. fairly different and um I, mm -hmm. it was going through that uh, kelly i feel that illnesses sometimes for a lot of people you can have some really mystical and powerful experiences when you're ill it's not nice obviously mm -hmm. but you can have a lot of realizations can't you about everything mm -hmm. it's like your body's kind of restarting and you, you're kind of going into that frequency where you're alone you're feeling like shit and you you think about your life you think about what you're going to do moving forward then the realization when you're feeling good like it's like the death and the rebirth cycle <laughs> you've got this new energy of life and it's like you've gone in and come back out this new person so for me it was hard but i felt like i learned a lot from it and like you say i feel covid is a virus which can keep on giving us gifts and i feel that gift what which it gave us was time time to understand ourselves time to come away from our job time to have a bit of alone time it the amount of people who have, ch have changed careers from covid is incredible the amount of people mm -hmm. who've gone now i'm not going back to yeah. that job i don't yeah. want to <laughs> and, and it's it's great that we're speaking about this because what you talked about at the start is a great point to go into about frequency and and how important it is and what does frequency mean? So we'll start off with frequency and what does it mean for those and how important it is to hold frequency and allow yourself to, what raises it, what lowers it, how important is that? Okay. So we all are energy, you know, at our core, that's what we are. You know, we experience this life in these bodies that are made up of cells and even more molecules and even more atoms. And at our core, we are energy and that energy moves and oscillates. And so that is your vibration. The vibration measured is your frequency. So we each have our own frequency or song. And throughout every day, your frequency rises and goes up and down and up and down or high or low isn't better, good or bad or better. It's just about finding your flow in everything from the point of being, you could be right now, like kind of in a satisfied, content state, and then something happens and scares you or pisses you off, and like instantly, you know, your frequency changes. You can watch something on the television and it affects you. Your frequency will change. What you eat, you know, the people you are around, your environment. Um, what you do for yourself, you know, all of that sort of stuff will, you know, affect your frequency. And the more you tend to your frequency, the less affected you can be, but still like no one's not affected by everything, you know, like, so <laughs> like that's not that, but it's just kind of finding that middle ground. And that's something that I always, you know, I talk about in my sound baths because sound is really about like finding that balance, that middle ground. And a lot of the times we're so disconnected from what that center is, we don't even know what it feels like, you know? So the more we come in tune with what that center is, we can feel as we veered off. Like I used to have really bad anxiety attacks and, and I don't even like the word attack, but I, for, for lack of a better word. Um, and when that started happening, I realized that I could start to feel more when it would come so I can have my certain tools or different things that I would do to kind of start to ground myself down, which a lot of the time is just simply breathing, you know? Um, but that there are tools that we can all have in our toolbox that help keep us in balance and in tune with our frequency. <laughs> Does that make sense? <laughs> yes, it makes perfect sense. And toolbox is a great word that I use that word, uh, finding the right tools for your toolbox and everyone can yeah. have so many different tools. Uh, for, for talking about anxiety, and it do, that's a probably one of the, I'd say one of the biggest things which stops people from doing a lot of great things is anxiety. I've had anxiety myself. I still at times have anxiety. I'm yeah, a human being like everyone. But f like you say, breath, that's for me, breath helped me. Um, when I started, do I set myself a challenge a year ago to do a, a year, six days of breath work challenge. 
and uh, I completed that a few days ago. Um, six days, except for the illness, I had my days off. I couldn't do it then. <laughs> it was too hard to do it then. But uh, for me, that helped me because year, years ago, that was my big blockage with myself was social anxiety and meeting people and learning that, that communication skill, listening skill. Um, and breath helped me. And for those listening, breath work is fucking amazing for helping you with stuff like that just the regular breathing like now noticing about how you breathe you really short breathe you deep breather because a lot of us don't breathe properly and it's it's great to like you say to have that breath and what are some of the things which help with anxiety for you then kelly with dealing with it and, and working on it understanding and how you healed from it what are some of the things you you else you did uh, in the beginning of all of that, I started yoga. Yoga and meditation were like two major things for me. I remember when I first started yoga, I had never done anything like that before. It had always intrigued me and I wanted to go, but I was intimidated to go to a studio and all of that. <laughs> um, but I remember the first time that I went, um, I literally was like, oh my gosh, that was the first time that I wasn't thinking about something. And my thinking was always worrying about something, worrying about what was gonna happen next or you know, pl trying to plan. Like my brain was always doing that and those patterns still come up but, you know, now, but it's more of yeah. witnessing them as being there, um, as them like controlling really my life as they, I feel like that they used to. Um, yeah, yoga, like being in my body, um, breath work, you know, sound, music, even if it's not like sound healing, like these vibrational instruments, music. And we talked about this the last time we were together, Dale. I think I went into like, you know, like my like love for music and just how it can uplift or help you emote and if you're sad, you know, all of that. So really grounding, being in nature, that is like a antidepressant that is free and is at our fingertips and our toes, you know, <laughs> just so many different things. <laughs> um, now, like that, like, you know, when I feel the anxiety and stuff, I have, you know, like, I do just kind of like body tapping and movement um, or just like intuitive, that helps a lot with like the anxiety or different things like that when it gets a little shaky in my body, like really just moving my body however it needs to. Um, yeah, really movement, meditation, uh, and music. Oh. <laughs> That's outstanding. And that, that, was, that was exactly which helped me was exercise regularly. Like you say, yoga got you in your body and when you are having those overthinking of overthinking, it's about realizing when that happens, you're out of the body and you've got to do mm -hmm. stuff. You've got to do physical yeah. stuff and intentionally grounding stuff. And for me, yeah. exactly the same. Um, I used to have overthinking used to be a big part of my life um, until I'll have the times. There will be the odd times where I will overthink, but mo majority of the times I'm at such a better stage in my life from doing more physical work. Like yoga is great because you're doing the stretches and you're making sure you're in your body. So it's it, the body doesn't really overthink. It's when you're really up in the clouds and you're like someone touches you and you're like, you kind of like so sensitive to everything because you say. <laughs> and I feel like even the thought of like, wait, what? I'm not in my body or I'm outside of my body. Like I remember in the beginning of that, it was like, what do you mean? But like, yeah, like we live so not in the body so often, you know, like it's, it, you know, like the more that I started connecting to my body, I realized how afraid I was to be in my body, you know, like, like deep seated fear had to be, and it still like has to be worked through to, you know, like we're okay here, you know, like self soothing, like I am <laughs> rocking myself <laughs> for real. Like that self soothe is, is major. <laughs> and, and, and that's a great way to, to look at it. And for me is um, like you coming away from I'd say there was a there was a, a big point wasn't there with like the word empath or loads of different words like that, and I think we're going through a stage of like evolving through because when you get say you go into a, a room and a lot of people pick up the room and they can't I I hold my hand up to this I used to be like this I years say three years ago 
I always said, oh, no, it's just too dense to go out there. Or I go out into public, I don't like the feel of things. But for me, what, when learning self-mastery skills um, and le thinking about it is trying to become more in your body and not out there in the room. <laughs> Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So when you're going into a room, you're fully present in your body in the now and yeah. you're not bloody out there feeling for, for a fart in the corner or a, a, a rat moving around in, in the other room or like that. You, the, you, those sensitivity skills that are for me what, what I've been working on, working mm -hmm. on is not getting overwhelmed with large groups and maybe going into a busy, quite a busy uh, place in a mall or anything like that or a restaurant and just sitting down and see if you can be around strange, strange people. Because yeah. I lost that. I kind of like mm -hmm. got into my spirituality and walked away from the socializing and being able to go out there in the real world and, and stuff like that so it's interesting isn't it how how many things we go through yeah. outstanding such so a process it, <laughs> it really has all these different stages <laughs> <laughs> so lowering your frequency then what are some of the let's talk about stress i think stress is a good thing to talk about how important it is is what is stress and how important it is to de-stress let's talk talk about that I feel like, I mean, we all have stress that comes from, you know, different angles in our life. Anything that causes us a feeling of, un you know, simply would be anything that causes us a feeling of unease and tension in the body. Um, well, that was really cool. <laughs> um, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like anything that causes tension in the body uh, and unease, uh, and that comes from many different things. A lot of it comes from the different stories in our mind, and it's not even external. Um, but, you know, when it's becoming a awareness, is key to know what causes you stress and what doesn't um, what affects you more you know than some stuff you know there could be like little stressors or there's bigger stressors you know so kind of like finding the balance between that and it doesn't mean like you can just one day you can flip a switch and okay I'm not gonna do any of the things that stress you out because odds are your job stresses you out your kids <laughs> stress you out you know your partner stresses you out or you know like, <clears throat> All of the, you know, all different things about being human and life, like, do stress us out. So it's just about being able to manage it. And I feel like, <clears throat> especially in the beginning, you know, taking time to, for you, of what makes you de-stress and be able to feel better, you know, knowing what makes you feel good and what doesn't. Um, really, I mean, there's a lot of layers to that in the very beginning. You know, like, there's guilt, so much guilt and shame, like to do to the the self-care you know like to do the things for our own self that helps um i'll never forget when i really started you know like getting massages and getting facials and you know i was in the i was a hairdresser so i was in the beauty industry so that stuff like really resonated with me but i never did it and then when i started i would feel, feel so guilty after doing it and that sort of thing but it's so we have to like break through those like those are the internal barriers, you know, and those stories of, you know, like, you know, what stops us from really taking care of, like, our frequency, our well-being, um, mental, emotional state, um, all of those things. And it also, it could be, like, a day where you're binging Netflix. Like, it doesn't need to be meditation or, you know, that. Like, there's many different things, um, you know, that help you unplug uh, from the regular routine and stresses of your life and be able to kind of, like, refill your tank as you're getting depleted and replenished. And also just supporting yourself and being aware of those fluctuations you know we run on an we've as a society run on an empty tank you know run on a depleted tank and we see that in health and all, all like the downfall of health and mental health and all those different things and so there's so many different ways that we can support ourselves in that way uh, and I just think it's being aware and you know really choosing the best for you too, as well as your life, your family, and your job, and all of that, you know, tending to yourself, your own garden, um, is what is you know really helpful. 
and that's a great way of uh, putting it tending to your own garden and we do get the weeds come back and we'll have to get a hoe out and hoe the weeds and take them out or then snip the bushes all, all the time the trees um, and that's so important and for me from the years I've done this and the clients I've had um, who've come and gone the big pattern for me recognition is something I've been in uh, been in, in the past is being able to keep on the journey and, and finding the journey not a chore but finding it fulfillment fulfilling after say a year, year and a half that's that's the next layer of, of awareness and the next frequency, uh, if you mm -hmm. want to put those words in there. Um, let's talk about that and why why is it hard for people to keep on the journey and what would you advise for them where they do get a bit stagnant and how can they ch change things around and, and bring that joy back into us? You know, I think it gets, you know, it just, you know, we kind of get lost in the shuffle sometimes. Like the world is made to distract us away from our own inner selves, you know, everything's <laughs> like one big distraction. So it's easy to kind of get caught up in that. <coughs> but when you have your mindful practices, I feel like even when you have your days of just not doing any of that stuff, you're able to realize through your feeling, you know, like through your body, oh, yeah, like I don't feel so good. Like I need to do this you know it's just like kind of a you know like these little circles and cycles and you know not beating ourselves up when we haven't done something to tend to our own garden but just kind of knowing what can like bring you bring you back and it's just that awareness you know like and into your own feelings emotional and physical state you know like sometimes like you know certain foods like you're eating certain foods they were okay for you at one point and then sometimes my body is like no more cheese or less cheese cow or you know whatever you know that sort of thing it's like your body is a big um kind of like barometer you know or scale for you for a lot of different stuff um yeah <laughs> standing and it is it's it's such a, a strange journey and it's great to talk about this and i know from coming in so coming from the winter into the spring there seems to be a lot of disconnection and a lot of stuff trying to lower our frequency ukraine russia and so many different narratives in the news mm -hmm. and this is why healing is so important to have moments of say going to see you uh, doing some sound journeying or going to see me doing ceremonies whatever whatever you want to do is it's so important and the other week i had a ceremony and after the ceremony i felt so fulfilled again and it's so important it reminded me of how important this journey was to me how important faith is to me and and to move through it and it is a grind isn't it it's like life is a grind and you'll get the ups and downs you'll get a, a rock thrown at you then you'll get a bazooka shot at you. <laughs> there's there's so yeah. so many di different um bumps and turns in the road and forgiving yourself i feel is one of the the great ways to raise frequency and allow the frequency mm -hmm. to be what it is um, for me, spring equinox, I've done some self forgiveness. Uh, I do each spring, I do blanket forgiveness where I forgive myself, that then I forgive other people through the year and remember childhood stuff. And I was doing it before this call, um, and I was doing it this morning as well. And it just reminded me how important it is. There's so many different little things in our life, and all it takes is us just to name it, to claim it, and let it go. Forgive and, and move forward and, and raise that frequency what's forgiveness like for you kelly and on your journey if that's definitely been very impactful um i feel like every so often you know i come back to oh forgiveness is the key here you know with whatever cycle and forgiveness of self forgiveness of others and just it always is such like a blanket it feels like you know when you come back to that um you know i use a lot when I when forgiveness comes around to me for that something that I should work with like to kind of move through a little something that's come up more um, you know using the Ho'oponopono prayer um, like those phrases you know like I'm sorry please forgive me I love you thank you um, you know reciting that you know to myself or picturing the person that um, I want to forgive and really it's not necessarily forgiveness to them it's forgiveness of myself you know yourself in the you know situation and really it feels like that's like a reconciliation is the word that comes through for me for that it's like a you know 
you know, when, oh, energetically we can have these ties and there's like knots and, you know, nuts and bolts and, you know, in these relationships. Um, and when you bring in the forgiveness, it feels like you're kind of like loosening up those threads and like opening up the space. And it just, you know, it isn't always easy. Um, and that's why we kind of keep coming back to it in different ways. But yeah, it's really uh, a powerful tool for sure. And especially right now with like, things being so intense and heavy and, you know, like the divide being pushed so much, like, you know, forgiveness is a powerful tool, not to anything specific, but just to work in that energy with yourself, like of being here on earth at this time where things are intense and dense, you know, like to whatever you can do to lighten that up and forgiveness is a beautiful, a beautiful medicine. Outstanding, and, and that's so true. Uh, forgiving the government, forgiving those people at war, forgiving all of those involved. I feel that's the greater journey. Is no matter what happens, is always using that forgiveness to set set yourself free. Like you said, it's not for them; it's for your own sake. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people get so pissed off, like about the petrol prices or COVID, loads of different things like that. The system wants you to be pissed off to harvest your energy from you. So when you're in that fear pissed off state it's basically feeding the system but if you're in that like you say the flow state the uh, dharma state the system doesn't interact with you as with throwing as much karma at you and you're able to have more of a nice relaxed life at times i do get pissed off with the government but oh, me too. <laughs> <laughs> but there's there's levels where i i choose my own personal journey is to choose to not follow the news and not allow the news to be an oral teacher to me because it's it's owned by corporations or it's just a narrative what they want you to to put into your head and for me when i stopped watching the news stopped getting involved in that my life seems a lot easier and clearer because like you say the stress there's less stress going on from all of that so so for this spring what are your plans for your spring equinox and kelly coming into this special time so I actually, um, I, I normally have a couple sound baths on the equinox and I actually have one on Saturday and then I have three next weekend and I did that purposely to have the day to be able to be outside in whatever way or wherever I am. Um, so I'm hoping to go to a new, a place that I've driven by when my husband and I did like a little, um, a trip uh, to just like a, the next state, um, but to really just like be able to be in nature, go somewhere new because that always feels like really good. Like you're opening up new energy when you're going to new, new different places and new things. And um, yeah, I'm really excited for the sound baths that I have. Um, I was really guided to this like rainbow ray light that is coming through right now. So that's gonna be our focus um, for the Zoom sound bath next Saturday. Uh, and then also going into next weekend, um, for, or the other weekend, the following weekend for some of those sound baths, I've been working with um, closely, more closely with the spirit animals and different animal energy. And so I'm going to be offering one of those those are in person here so I'm excited to that and I just feel like this this spring the equinox I mean as we just keep moving through all these different cycles and everything more is opening up like more energy is available to us and so I just feel like being in nature is definitely like a beautiful way to honor this time and honor ourselves outstanding and I'll, I'll be having a, a fire ceremony on the spring equinox morning and like you said at the start how important nature is my advice for people listening is to go out in nature over spring, have a celebration, honor what's really there, the natural world, the unseen world, and it will teach us, nature, te nature teaches us in so many different ways, and just to go out there and be silent and listen to the planet, listen to the trees, the plants, the birds making noises, that's something we all need in at the moment, from all of this crazy, crazy war imprinting going on. So. Kelly is going to be doing as a special gift for the Equinox. She's going to be taking us on a sound journey. So, Kelly, mm -hmm. are you all good to go? <laughs> sure, yeah. <laughs> and, and can I just say it's, it's a pleasure to have you back on the show and we'll have you back on next year as well. Um, I really appreciate your work as well and, and the, the discipline and dedication you have. Thank you so much, Dale. <laughs> <laughs> 
So take it away. (laughs) I'm going to put myself on mute. Yeah. We'll just go for like five, ten minutes. (laughs) Okay. into your breath and into your body. Allowing the sounds, tones, and energy, the vibrations and the frequencies to assist you in becoming one with your breath. Allowing you to drop in and find your presence here. Feeling your feet on the ground. Your spine long and tall. giving the lungs space to fill fully, expanding the rib cage and the belly, breathing in new life, new ideas, breathing in the new. Your exhales breathe out anything that is heavy, your worries and stress, breathing in, that feeling of growth, those little seedlings breaking through the soil, coming up supported and almost even pulled by the sun coming from the darkness, from the shell, and birthing in and through the earth to the light. Feeling the love of Mother Earth holding this seed. Maybe in your visualization, you are this seedling. Son, both energies holding you, supporting this regrowth, rebirth, resurrection, regeneration. Allow this feeling of coming up and through the dense soil to be felt in your body. Allow this feeling of coming up and out of the density, like a whale breaching. Lifting you out, up and through your areas of tension, holding or stress and seeing all of that energy, feeling all of that energy as fertilizer for your soil. Your past, memories, emotions, challenges. These past two years break down into memory and support your regeneration in this present moment, here and now.
allow you to come up and out and be in the sun. Feeling the rejuvenation of the golden rays. The warmth and activation of the sun. Resistances to seep in the soil to be transmuted, allowing you to rise higher and lighter than ever before from a balanced state, from a frequency that knows it is free, sovereign in its choosing.
me kone e o na au, kone o kona au. Na ki o na au e ke o na au e ke na au a kana e o kone a o kane o a kaya. Na kane o e ke o a na kae e na ya. Na kae o no a ke o na yo kane yo. Na kana ye yo kona ya yo kona. Na ke o na kue ya na yo kona awa awa. May you give yourselves permission to begin again and again and again. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was beautiful and just what's needed. And it was great coming into the equinox. I could really feel that change in that perspective coming in from what you were sounding and saying. Thank you so much, Kelly. I really appreciate it. Thank you so, so much for having me, Dan. <laughs> thank you. It's always fun. And so how can people get a hold of you for your sessions or your um, events online, face to face? Uh, so you can reach out to me on Facebook, Kelly Nicholson, and then on Instagram, you could look up Kelly Nicholson or also I'm at Infinite Love and Light. Um, you could reach out to me right now. I'm in the process of having a website created so I can have all of my services listed on there, but uh, as well as sound Zooms online and one-on-one -on -one sessions as well through Zoom and in person and pure frequency sessions through a little device called a Healy, which has been very impactful and powerful in my own life, um, as well as coaching sessions and soul guidance to support you on your way. Please reach out. I am here to support you and it's an honor. So thank you so much, Dale, for the opportunity to share thank you. and speak. And thank you. I, I appreciate <laughs> you, sister, and thank you for coming on. And I'd like to thank everyone for listening and coming into the Equinox. Any last words, um, Kelly, of coming into the Equinox? Anything before we fully say goodbye? <laughs> and my the only thing that's come to me is just to remember to breathe. There we breathe. go. <laughs> Take some deep breaths. <laughs> we got this. Breathe out the bullshit. What are they <laughs> yeah. gonna throw throw at yeah. us? <laughs> breathe. You got this. You were born for this. We're asking here for this. And yeah, just get outside. Put your bare feet on the ground and just know that you know how to see your way through everything and anything that you're experiencing right now. Outstanding. Mm -hmm. And don't give up on yourself. That's something which I've been telling myself through the year, which has really helped me. <laughs> Believe <Show up>. in <laughs> you. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you everyone for watching the Talking Stick Show. And thank you again, Kelly. And I'll have you on. We'll catch up at some point, maybe towards the end of the year. So thank you again. And I'll speak to you soon. Goodbye. Okay. Bye. See you later, sister. <laughs> Take care. Bye, everyone. Thank you.